Emulation. It's been a big thing in the gaming community for quite some time. Be it in the form of playing backwards compatible games on consoles such as the PlayStation 3, or using an emulator on PC designed to emulate the console and the desired game as well. Either way you look at it, you've played on an emulator in some way. But then that begs the question, what is the allure of having a whole console plus the game emulated on PC? What are the benefits of it? And are there any downsides to it? Stick around as I take a dive into the world of emulation and see if we can find out why emulation is a big part of the gaming community and what the positives and the negatives of it can be. First off, what is an emulator? An emulator, in this video's context, is a program designed to emulate the original console and its hardware. Some emulate it to the T without any enhancements, while others offer enhancements to improve the quality or the overall feel and smoothness of the games played on it. While it's hard to fully pinpoint what the first emulator was, a lot of Google and internet searches will show that the NES was the first console to be emulated. However, the first working console seems to have been called Paso Fami, which I've probably pronounced incorrectly, and was the first Nintendo Entertainment slash Nintendo Famicom emulator and debugger for Windows. This was released way back in 1995, and it was one of the first Famicom emulators to come out of Japan. While being a big deal for emulators back then, in the present we tend to expect an emulator to come out in some form for the newest console or the oldest console that has long since passed. The most recent example would be the very well known RPCS3 emulator, which is a program that emulates PS3 games, with a host of enhancements to make the experience a whole lot better. Over the years there have been a good range of emulators made, some are still getting made for older consoles like the PS1 to this day. The most recent older console to show up recently is called Duck Station. Much like EPSXE, it aims to emulate the original PlayStation. Unlike that emulator, this one offers a lot more in the way of enhancements and fixes to improve the overall experience of PS1 titles. Some of these enhancements allow you to play in a true widescreen, fix the warping graphics many PS1 titles had, and allow you to play in higher resolutions as well. However, more newer ones you will see in the world of emulation lately is emulators like Xena, which is an emulator that emulates, well, Xbox 360. And as said, RPCS3 for the PS3. And recently, from what I have seen, Classic Xbox Reloaded, which is an original Xbox emulator with added features to play games in better resolution, like for example, the Warriors game, which, by the way, is the best version of the game to play graphically out of the PS2 and PSP ports. But overall, there is nearly an emulator for a whole range of consoles, barring the newer stuff, obviously. So don't expect a PS4 or Xbox One emulator anytime soon. Though emulators aren't just exclusive to talented fans making them in their spare time. Companies themselves have had their own emulators they use as well. One of these would be Sega with their Sega Mega Drive slash Genesis Collection game, which allows you to play the classic games in a virtual 90s themed game room. It also comes with the option of playing the game in full screen or playing it staring at the TV with many options for the emulator like upscaling the game and adding scan lines for that true CRT TV experience. Plus then comes the fact that the workshop has mods that allow you to play other Mega Drive games that aren't buyable on Steam or in the collection in the first place. Ever wanted to play Robocop vs Terminator in the virtual room? Now you can play it in place of Comic Zone. Another company that has done their own emulator would be Nintendo, way back on the Nintendo Wii. A lot of great NES games there. So looking at it, the positives we can see from emulators both by companies and talented people is the thought of knowing that these classics won't be forgotten and can be enjoyed by both new and old fans. Other positives for this would be playing the games in better resolution, having the classic titles and more rare titles being preserved and not lost, or forcing people to pay a lot of money to get the actual cartridge or disc to play it. And finally, not being forced and stuck to the default hardware limitations that, well, the original hardware would have. All this can make the experience a whole lot better, and also allow for capturing and recording footage easier. Would be great for reviews or, I don't know, a vid where some guy talks about the allure of emulators. Now we come to that part everyone hates, and something I always see as a double-edged sword. Emulators do open up that double-edged sword of ROM ISO dumps and our old friend piracy. Piracy, as you all know, is a way to illegally obtain media, 
be it in the form of programs, movies, TV shows, games, and so on. Piracy itself has been around for ages and in terms of what it means for game companies, it means they can lose out on profits made if someone just obtains a dump or a cracked slash hacked copy of their game. So emulation could also be bad in the fact that it allows people to play these games for free and own a quotation marks console free as well. This fully eliminates the need to buy anything at all, outside of maybe a better PC to handle emulation at its best. Now we could be here all day with talking about the cons of this and talking about piracy overall, but to sum it up, I feel piracy is as big as it is due to there not really being demos for games anymore that people can try for free to see if they'll like the game and in general, pricing being higher for the console and the games. This goes true for older consoles and games. Some of the older gen consoles and games can become extremely rare and the people selling these will always put a huge price on it depending on the rarity of it. So again, double-edged sword where there is good and bad sides to amazing things. But for all the bad side to emulation, I still feel emulators open up so much more for people to research things on, to learn and understand games better, to see how they work, and to also appreciate them a lot more, to go beyond what the base hardware held the game back from. A good example or two of this is seeing classic PS2 games in better resolution and widescreen. And the other would be seeing games like Yakuza Dead Souls, a game that was plagued by its terrible frame rates on PS3 and its blurry resolution which was limited to 720p at the time. Now, slap that game into RPCS3 and mess with the enhancements, and while still a bit funny to play on the emulator for some, it overall looks nicer and the FPS is so much better too, thus making the overall experience a lot better, because I can't see this game getting a remaster port treatment like 3 to 5 did. Honestly, emulation means a lot of different things to different people, both good and bad. To me, I see it as a new way to keep classics and new games alive, as well as a new way to experience a classic in better quality too. It won't be going anywhere anytime soon, and I hope it's a thing that will stay around for a long, long time. Thanks for watching folks, I know it's been a little while since I did a voice vid, so I hope you enjoyed this little dive in and my thoughts on emulation as a whole. Also, I will be continuing the AC1 Enhanced series and will eventually get back to doing some more podcast episodes as I love those and the people that join me for them as well. So keep an eye out for those. Thanks for watching and stay awesome folks.